It's funny. I do spend a lot of time working on this game and I tend to beat myself up for not making the kind of progress I want to see for not being super productive every single day. But when I looked over my commit history for the past three weeks since the last video, it's not so bad. There have been a few substantial changes and tons of minor tweaks and fixes. Overall, by comparison, it feels like things are actually coming together. So what do we have? I am moving away from my old UI overlay for encounters, putting more of the interaction on the map. I've been experimenting with variations of NPCs generated from a few body parts that can be combined at random. Also, the card game challenges are now more integrated with the 3D map. It's a more seamless experience and saves me some work. I don't have to do an extra illustration for the challenge cards I had before. The story for the first quest is fleshed out, with a new Lina file format replacing my old JSON files. This should work much better for the 12 to 15 other quests I want to implement for the main storyline. And there's more artwork, both on the map and in the form of additional player cards. Speaking of the map, there's a lot of new logic behind the scenes for distributing and spacing items in the landscape which inspired today's Godot tip on bounding box computations in the second half of the video. The last major bit of game mechanics is underway too. At the end of each round in the card game, I want something like a chance card triggering random events. It's been in the game for months, but only now I get to give it more thought. Of course, there will still be plenty of polishing, balancing and bug fixing required over the coming weeks and months. but. It seems I can now move on to the parts around the core gameplay, driving the bigger story. I mean, for a game titled Amy's World, I haven't really explained what this world is all about. There's a lot of accumulated writing already, and even a rough animatic for an intro I prepared a while ago. I'm really looking forward to fleshing all of this out and add some drama to the game. Okay, enough about my game. Let's move on to today's Godot Tech Tip. This one is about AABBs, Axis Aligned Bounding Boxes. For a piece of geometry in your scene, Godot computes a box around it, telling you how much space the object takes up. You can get that box with a simple call. This box is local to the node. To get the box in global space, you can simply apply the global transform of the node to the box. When you have multiple nodes, each with their own box, Godot provides a method to merge them all together. Fantastic. In my game, I need that information when I am constructing the map. To avoid placing items too close to each other, I let them occupy slots in an internal grid. So, before even adding an item to the scene tree, I need to figure out how much space it is going to take up. I immediately hit two limitations here. Each item may consist of multiple sprites, so I need to merge boxes together. But before adding the whole thing to the scene, there is no global transform yet. So I cannot simply merge globally transform boxes together. On top of that, for sprite 3D, boxes are only computed on draw, so there is not even a local AABB before rendering a sprite for the very first time. To overcome these problems, I wrote a function that computes the merge bounding box for a hierarchy using only local node transforms. And added support for sprite3d along the way. Let's say we have a node of trees, each with its own local transform and local bounding boxes. The top node's box is transformed by the node's own transform. The box of the next node down the tree by the concatenation of its own and its parent's transform. And so on, walking down the tree. With all the boxes being transformed into the same space, we can simply merge them all together. In code, this can be easily realized with the recursive function. This function is what we call from the outside. It receives the root node of the hierarchy we want to get the aggregated bounding box for. Remember, this doesn't have to be in the global scene tree yet. We initialize the recursion with that node and its local transform. The bounding boxes from the nodes in the subtree are collected into an array. We then simply merge all of the boxes in the array together and return the result. The recursive function itself receives the current node of the tree we are descending into 
and the accumulate transform from that node to the root node of the tree. Leaving the sprite 3D case aside for the moment, I essentially get the local bounding box of the node, transform it using the matrix we passed in and store it in the array. The function then calls itself recursively on all the children of the current node, concatenating the transform of the child node to the transform we passed in. The recursion terminates when a node doesn't have any children. Now let's have a look at the support for Sprite 3D. In my game I only care about sprites that face along the z-axis. The size of a sprite is determined by the dimensions of the texture, as well as the pixel size property. I also take the offset and center properties into account to position the box correctly. The resulting box really is a plane with zero depth in the z-dimension. It shouldn't be hard to adjust this code to sprites facing other directions if you need it. Here's a little test scene exercising the function on 3D geometry. I'm simply adding another box to the scene every second, at various levels in the tree. If you look closely, you can see how some of the smaller boxes rotate around their respective parents. Again, when your nodes are in the scene and already rendered, you don't actually need this extra code, I just wanted a live demonstration. For completeness, I want to mention that a recursion like this can run into a stack overflow if your tree is nested very deeply. In GDScript, the limit is at a depth of 1024 calls, so I trust it's not going to be a problem in practice. And you can always rewrite the recursion using a loop and an array instead of relying on the call stack, but I won't go into that here. And that's my little tip for today, let me know if you find this useful. See you for the next update. Bye.